chapter 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgment which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee. Thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt abide, bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware of, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt feel the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall swear by his name. You shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God, as he tempted him in Mazar. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And, shall, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayst go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto the son, We were Pharaoh's bound men in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of the Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for everything that you've done for this church. And we pray, I pray that you would just please uh, fill me with your spirit, and make me preach the message that you want to be taught. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So the title of my message today is, Why It's Important to Follow God's Commandments. And as we see in Deuteronomy chapter 6, God's saying, I want you to love me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. These commandments I give you are important, and you should teach them to your children. And if nothing else, make sure they know the word of the Lord. Make sure you're not ignoring God's word, because when, when things start to go really well for you, God starts blessing you, that's when you need to be careful not to be prideful. And a lot of people do this. So many 
people get too prideful when God bless, blesses them financially and they think that they got all that money and stuff because they're so great and they're so special. But they don't really end up thinking that, oh, maybe God just blessed me. And it has nothing to do with me. Now, we should humble ourselves and work with God through the instructions that he has given us. Your life will be full of so much more joy the closer you can follow God's commandments. Because when we break his commandments, it only brings sorrow and pain. When we keep them, it's going to bring us happiness and peace. And this can go with children, too. Like, if they don't follow the rules of the house, what's dad or mom going to do with them? They're going to give them a punishment, like a slap. And that's the same thing that God will do to us if we don't follow his commandments. Like, if we steal something or kill somebody, he's going to punish us for the work that we did. And unfortunately, people often get wrapped up in a cycle of disobeying God. Because, because when they disobey God and things aren't working out so well in their life, God starts punishing them. And then they start to get mad at God even more because more bad things are happening to them. And they end up pushing God further and further away. And they, ca and they cause themselves a lot more problems. But all we have to do is just follow God's commandments. And God can help us through these things. Um, turn to Hebrews 12.6. Let me just get there. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourge every son whom he receiveth. So if you're a child of God, God will punish you if you do bad things, like stealing, lying, because he loves you, and that's why he punishes us. It's the same thing with children. Your parents will punish you because they love you. They don't want you to go down a bad path. Okay? So now in our life, we should be trying to follow God's commandments. And the world it rejects every single uh, commandment of God. The world says that it's okay to go out and fornicate with a bunch of women. Like, oh, just do it safely. But it's not okay. It's exactly opposite what the Bible says. The Bible says to be pure before you get married. Um, we can turn to 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians six eighteen to twenty. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy, Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. 
For ye are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So fornication, it corrupts your body. And that's bad. Okay. And the world also says that it's okay to get drunk, party, do drugs. Just do it safely. And all this other wicked stuff, but this will ruin your life. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. So we don't want to be filled with drunkenness or mm -hmm. drugs. We want to be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But it takes effort to keep God's commandments. It's not easy sometimes. It's hard to fight against sin. But it's really easy to give in to the lusts of the flesh. But if you're dedicated to follow God, then you're you are going to fight against the those temptations. You're going to do what's right. And that what makes a good Christian follow God. Um, turn to Deuteronomy 6, where we started. are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither thee go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, that thy, thy days may be prolonged. So we see here that this is one way that we demonstrate that we do have a fear for God. It's when we keep God's commandments. And this is also a way that we show that we love God by keeping God's commandments. And also turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 58 to 60. says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and for long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So God's saying here that if you don't do this, if you don't listen to my words, if you don't follow my commandments, in verse 59, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, of long continuance and sore sickness and of long continuance. Notice he said long continuance twice. So it's going to last a long time if you choose to disobey God. And then guess what? He's going to make your plagues wonderful. And in the Bible when it says wonderful, that's not a good thing. It means that it's full of wonder but people are going to be amazed at God's awesome power, but not in a good way. So to me, this sounds like a pretty good reason to fear God and follow his commandments, because we don't want these plagues. Notice that God is speaking to his people, Israel. The same people that he saved out of Egypt, the same people that he gave thanks to and that he blessed. The same people that God sang to be careful and to keep his commandments. And this could relate to us, too, because God blesses us. And when we don't follow God's commandments, he's going to punish us. So turn to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Ten verse twelve to thirteen. It 
says, And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So God's saying to Israel, What does the Lord thy God require of you but just to fear him? just to keep his commandments, just to follow him. And this may sound like everything, like it's the world, but in reality it's not. But it's up to us to make the decision. Am I going to love God with all my might? Am I going to follow God's commandments? Am I going to fear God? So it's up to us to make the decision to follow his commandments. Now we also need to remember to always be fearing God and not men, because oftentimes that gets people to forsake God's laws is the fear of men. Like a feeling of fear from a family member or friends or your workplace. They say not to go to church, don't go soul winning, like what's the point? Don't do this or don't do that. And they try to take you away from serving God. And you can't maintain a fear of men and a fear of God at the same time. You yeah. must fear God. I have some verses to prove to fear God. So in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, For do I now forsake men for God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. We want to please God. Uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, it says, The fear of men bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 says and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell so men can't kill our soul but God can kill our soul and send us to hell when we're not saved when we're saved he, he won't do that now a fun fact the ten commandments is only mentioned three times in the old testament um, it's mentioned first in Exodus chapter 30, verse 28. Uh, you don't have to turn, turn there. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Uh, second time in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13, says, And he declared unto you his covenant. Which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments and he wove them upon two tables of stone uh, and the third time in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 4 says and he wrote on the tables according to the first writing the ten commandments which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly and the Lord gave them unto me and I also found some verses about following God's commandments so in John 14, 15, uh, you don't have to turn there, says, this is Jesus speaking, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. So if you really love God, keep his commandments. Uh, chap Revelation chapter 22, 18 to 19, it says, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book, any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book, to the Bible. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5, it says, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, <coughs> so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore, Thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to fear him. And turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Of the whole manner. 
fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every se secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So now this is something that we need to make sure that we are doing on a regular basis. And I know none of us are perfect, but how about we start with a mindset that says, I want to follow God's word, I want to keep his commandments, I want to fear God, and I'm going to do my best to read the Bible every day, I'm going to come to church every week, I'm going to go soul winning. And I know that whatever God has commanded is for my own good. So he's not saying this to be mean or anything, or for you not to have any fun, it's for your own good to stay away from drugs, wine, all right? So yeah, that's why it's important to follow God's commands. Uh, let's play.